When it comes to Dynasty, this time of the year is the best time to go and target your win now trade targets. That's because we start getting redraft and best ball ADP to help make our decisions, right? Who are people actually buying into for the 2023 season? we finally are starting to get that data. So let's take a look at some players that are going significantly higher in their best ball or redraft ADP compared to Dynasty and use that to pinpoint our win now trade targets. Starting at the running back position, let's take a look at Miles Sanders. Right now he is the RB25 in startup ADP and he's going 78th overall in one quarterback startup leagues. Now, when we look at redraft ADP, he's going as RB18, but more importantly, he's going 57th overall. So clearly, the expectation for what we you know, want him to do in this season is significantly better or significantly higher than the dynasty communities treating him. He's coming off of a career high in rushing yards, career high in touchdowns, career high in total touches. I don't know if we can expect 11 touchdowns, but he should be the focal point of an offense in Carolina that is going to try to lean on him to take some of the work off of Bryce Young, right? When you look at the pass catchers, this should not be a pass heavy offense. An offense that is led by Adam Thielen, DJ Chark, LaVisca Chenault, Terrace Marshall should not be a pass-heavy offense. Ideally, it's going to end with, you know, Miles Sanders getting 250, 260 carries, and he has the upside or the ability to earn 50-plus targets, right? You're looking at a guy who had 115 targets over his first two seasons in the NFL. He has the ability to catch passes. It just hasn't been there with how low volume Philly has been the last couple of seasons. So what is he actually costing in your dynasty leagues? Well, using the DLF trade finder, I found three deals that have taken place that I am okay pulling the trigger on to get Miles Sanders. If you still have rookie drafts going, the 112 for Miles Sanders. Now, depending on your league, that could be like Jonathan Mingo or Josh Downs or the guys in that territory. Give me Miles Sanders over all of them. I think over the next couple of seasons, because he did sign a four-year contract, he is not a one-year player to me. I prefer Miles Sanders, you know, in the short term. Next, you have the 206 and the 207. Again, two dart throws. We're lucky if they ever, ever give us any kind of production at all, especially with this draft class. So I will take Miles Sanders over both of those picks. And to close it out, we have Zeke and Kadarius Tony for Miles Sanders. I am not a Kadarius Tony guy. I do not think he is a good receiver. I don't think he's going to be a difference maker when it comes to fantasy, right? He could be a wide receiver three. That's replaceable. I don't really care. And then Zeke, he's washed. We don't know where he's going to play. I'm just out on Zeke for this season and Dynasty really moving forward. Sticking at the running back position, this is probably, this has been a win now trade target, right? For the last three, four years, it seems. We're buying back into Derrick Henry. Currently, he's being drafted as the RB6 in redraft leagues, 21st overall. And he's going as the RB17, 54th overall in our dynasty leagues. If you are win now, and only if you are truly a legitimate contender, you should be looking to target Derrick Henry. Yes, right? We have the argument that the offense probably won't be good because Ryan Tannehill's kind of washed up, meh, injury prone, whatever the hell you want to call him. And you could get Will Levis starting games. But the thing is, look at last season, a year where Derrick Henry runs for 1,500 yards puts up double digit touchdowns yet again. He does that mostly with Ryan Tannehill and then Josh Dobbs and Malik Willis starting games. Derrick Henry is going to be the focal point of the offense. It doesn't matter who's under center. They can have Chig running routes and they can have Traylon Burks running routes. It will all come back to Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is not normal. He is not the average running back. He may never hit a cliff. He just may retire one day. Honestly, Derrick Henry is probably going to put up another 300 plus touches, another 1500 yards and be a league winning running back in Dynasty. And when you look at the price, he's really just going for cheap. I mean, you're looking at Chase Brown and a 2024 20, second. That was a recent trade for Derrick Henry. I don't understand that at all. When you look at a little more realistic trades, I think he was flipped for the 110. Okay, so you're giving up Devon A. Chain, Kendry Miller, maybe, you know, Zach Charbonnet. That's fine. There's a realistic chance none of those players are ever top 12 running backs, let alone top five top six guys. Derrick Henry this season will mean more to your fantasy team than any of those players most likely ever will. Take Derrick Henry. And then the last one here, Alec Pierce in the 112. Okay, well, I, everything I just said about the 110, twice is true for the 112. I, Alec Pierce doesn't move the needle for me. Take Derrick Henry. I think that's an easy trade. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt this video, but I wanted to let y'all know about our YouTube memberships on this channel. If you want extra bonus content from Justin or myself, 
access to my prospect database for all rookies since 2001, access to our exclusive Discord channel, as well as badges and emojis, then check out the YouTube memberships using the link in the description down below. The bonus content tier is what you're looking for for more DLF on YouTube. Thanks for checking it out, guys, and we'll get back to this amazing video. Now, shifting to the wide receiver position, this is a guy we've talked about on this channel, I think, a few times over the last couple of months, but it is Amari Cooper, and Amari Cooper right now is being drafted as the wide receiver 17 in redraft, 39th overall. When you look at Dynasty, wide receiver 33, 63rd overall. Amari Cooper is not going to just disappear over the next one, two, maybe even three seasons. When you look at what he is as a wide receiver and what he can be with Deshaun Watson should he return to form, I am buying in in Dynasty. I am buying in in redraft. With Jacoby Brissett under center, he was the wide receiver 14 in points per game. He should be able to replicate that in some form with Deshaun Watson, with a full offseason, again, with everything we just talked about. So that is a check in his favor. I fully expect him to lead this team comfortably in targets. While he may not get 27, 28%, Amari Cooper in the 25% range feels realistic, right? Even 24% with Elijah Moore, Donovan Peoples Jones, Cedric Tillman, all of those pieces there. Amari Cooper is still the best receiver on the team. He is the most polished receiver on the team. And he should be Deshaun Watson's best friend, essentially, because everything I just listed. I pulled two trades for Amari uh, from that DLF trade finder. So the first one is Mike Williams and the 307. I don't understand this at all. Mike Williams got first round competition. And while Quentin Johnson may not be a stud or a, you know, a ready to go locked in wide receiver one, he should push Mike Williams. They, they're gonna play similar play styles. Mike Williams is hurt already. He may not even be available for the season. So I just, I don't love that trade in any way. And then the other one here is Sky Moore, the 210 and the 212. That's just three pieces I don't care about. I don't know how else to say it. I'm not in on Sky Moore. We know this, it's well documented. The 210, the 212, total dart throws. Amari Cooper means more to you this season than any of those three pieces likely ever do at any point and at time at all. And to close it out, we have one more wide receiver, this time looking at Keenan Allen. Now, he's being drafted as wide receiver 20, 42nd overall. And in Dynasty, he is going as wide receiver 41, 90th overall. This has a ton to do with his age, right? Keenan Allen is 31 years old. He's coming off a season where he missed half the year. And the fact of the matter is, when he came back from injury, Keenan Allen returned to form. He was elite once again. You're looking at a guy that would have been a top 12 wide receiver in points per game, and the usage itself was just otherworldly, right? You're looking at a guy that put up a 26.8% target share, a 35% red zone share, and a 35% air yard share. So he saw a lot of targets, he saw a lot of targets near the end zone, and he saw a lot of targets deep. Those are the three things you want in a wide receiver. Now, the production for touchdowns wasn't there, but with Justin Herbert, that's going to come, right? Joel Lombardi is out. They have a new high-flying offense that should open things up, and Keenan Allen should be the main benefactor, right? And like I said in the Mike Williams trade, right? Quentin Johnston is there, but he is not a ready, you know, tailor-made wide receiver one from day one. It's still going to be Keenan Allen. Quentin Johnston is going to push Mike Williams. He's going to basically relegate Josh Palmer to the bench. That's what happens. Keenan Allen is still going to be Keenan Allen. Even at 31 years old, he is much more likely, I think, to finish inside the top 15 wide receivers in terms of points per game than he is to finish outside the top 24. So if I'm a win now team, I'm a wide receiver away, you know, a, a high profile, high level, high producing wide receiver away. I'm going after Keenan Allen and he's cheap. I mean, he is dirt cheap right now. When you look at the DLF trade finder, these three deals I pulled are ridiculous. Cedric Tillman, who is essentially a late second, early third round rookie pick and a 2024 20, second. I will pay that for top 15 production for one season, maybe even two. The next one is Isaiah Hodgins and Rashid Shahid. What? I, I don't understand that trade at all. If you want to trade away a good high profile veteran, don't get pieces that are probably worth nothing by like week five or six of this season. And then to close it out, Keenan Allen for Juju Smith-Schuster. Juju is replaceable at this point in terms of fantasy. He can give you wide receiver two, wide receiver one weeks, but ultimately he's a wide receiver three, a flex with like low end wide receiver two upside. I just don't really get that kind of play there. I'm happy to take Keenan Allen over 
a bunch of you know future middling seasons from Juju Smith-Schuster. Hey Justin, sorry to hijack your video, but I just wanted to add in one of my favorite win now buys right now at the quarterback position actually, and that's Matthew Stafford, who is currently the QB 22 in underdog best ball ADP, but he's the QB 29 in May DLF Superflex ADP, which basically means that the community thinks that Stafford is like a bottom five starting quarterback in the league right now, which is crazy. And I mean, I get it. He wasn't that good last year. He only played in nine games, only threw 10 touchdowns, also threw eight interceptions, then just didn't play it all over the second half of the season with a concussion and a spinal cord contusion. And this was after the whole like elbow sprain infection kind of thing that he was dealing with before the season even started. And on top of all of that, he's 35 years old. And if more injuries pop up, his time in the NFL may be limited going forward. However, I do feel like we are overreacting here for just a bad and injured season, almost like we forget that the year prior in 2021, Stafford was the QB5 overall in fantasy with 4,900 yards, 41 passing touchdowns. Now, I'm not going to say that he's doing that again in 2023, but just 4,000 yards, 25 to 30 touchdowns, that's like an average season for Matthew Stafford, and that would put him as a solid QB2 in fantasy. I mean, Aaron Rodgers last year had 3,727, finished as a QB13. Tua had 3,525, finished as a quarterback 15. Trevor Lawrence even had 4,100 yards, 30 total touchdowns, finished as the QB6 last year. This is a range that Stafford can easily find himself in this year, and you're buying him right now at QB29 prices in Dynasty. I mean, just look at these trades. Matthew Stafford in the 211 for the 2.03 and 312 in a Superflex League? What are you getting at 2.03? Like Jonathan Mingo, Roshan Johnson? I'm sending all of that away for a QB2 that I can start in Superflex easily and you're getting a late second on top of that as well as a kicker. Or what about Stafford for just Trey McBride in a Superflex League? I mean, I like McBride. I think that he has a lot of potential for sure, but that's all he is right now. It's just potential. For those of you out there with Trey McBride on your roster, he's probably not even your start. He's probably your tight end two, tight end three that you're hoping maybe you start a couple times this year and he develops into somebody that you can start every week. But Stafford, I know I can play every single week. He'll actually produce for you. So I'm taking Matthew Stafford over Trey McBride straight up. And then lastly, this one's really interesting. Matthew Stafford and Ramondre Stevenson for C.J. Stroud. And this is really for some specific teams out there. But if you have C.J. Stroud and he's like your QB3 that you kind of got out of luxury because you had an extra pick that just ended up being top five and you drafted C.J. Stroud, but you are competing in 2023, I'm totally fine trading him away for Matthew Stafford, who will probably straight up just outscore C.J. Stroud this year. But then you also get Ramondre Stevenson, who I believe can be a top 10 running back this year. So you're getting two starters for the price of one here to compete this season. I absolutely love this trade. And speaking of trades that I absolutely love, I have four more players that I'm buying right now in Dynasty that you can watch in this video right up here.